Our lives can change in the blink of an eye, and it's in these critical moments that often we must decide whether or not we're going to trust God with our situation and our future. Joining me now to share her deeply moving personal story is Pat Wiedemer. Welcome to 100 Huntley Street, Pat. Thank you so much. It's oh. a delight to be here. <laughs> well, Pat, you know, you have such an inspiring personal story. We're so thankful that you're joining us right now to share it. Um, you know, you grew up in a military family, mm -hmm. family of faith, a strong Catholic family. Yes. And you guys ended up moving back to Prince Edward Island, mm -hmm. went to Acadia University. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but after that, you did a big jaunt across the globe and ended up in Germany. Yes. And you met someone very special. Tell us about I did. your late husband. Um, the desire to go to Germany came because I wanted to see the world. Like, who doesn't when you're 18, 19 years of age? And I was accepted at a university in Freiburg in southern Germany. That's in the Black Forest. Wow. There I met my husband. <laughs> and we were both studying and finishing our master's degrees. He's an, uh, an economist. And then we got married and moved to the city of Würzburg, which is in northern Bavaria. And there we raised our five children. Uh, he established his company and uh, uh, provided for us. And I also had the great opportunity of being connected with the U.S. Army, mm. which had a post in Würzburg there. So I had the best of both worlds and being able to live in the country of choice with my husband and his family. And of course, then to being able to have that home connection with not only an American, North American community, but a military community, which was very familiar to me from my youth. That's interesting. And so you're a mom of five kids and here you are essentially in ministry in a military mm -hmm. community and you're ministering in in the in the realm of music mm -hmm. and to the Catholic community yes. tell us a bit about that ministry experience yeah I truly believe it, it was God's hand who brought it uh, there the, when you look back in your life you see these kinds of different episodes which obviously was his hand moving us in the direction and I was accepted to, uh, to or asked to join the choir that joined turned into would you please lead the choir and then the work with a chapel community in the U.S. Army, and probably much the same here in Canada, um, is very unique because the chapel is not just my church or your church. It's everybody's church. So you had everyone from your Catholics, your, your, your Baptists, your Presbyterians, your Church of God, your Jewish uh, community. Everybody had to share the same building. And for all the ways that people... Um, wanted to worship and pray from the heart. There were creative ways of making that happen. Yeah. And this was fundamental in looking at my life and looking at the work I do now to see that there's always got to be another way mm -hmm. that we can manage to come to a compromise and focus on the most important thing because that indeed was the most important thing. We are coming here to worship. Oh, Pat, such mm -hmm. interesting insights you mm -hmm. have. And I love, you know, you're a vibrant Catholic mm -hmm. woman, but you have such a sensitivity to different mm -hmm. ecumenical expressions mm -hmm. of the Christian mm -hmm. faith and you know your curiosity for mm -hmm. theology and all those things also began to grip at you back in mm -hmm. that in that yes. season mm -hmm. you ended up doing a second master's degree mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you're so smart I'm like a second master's degree in yeah. theology Yes. Yeah. Um, the reason for that is since I was the, the liturgical music minister, I had to understand what I was doing, that there was more to this than just entertaining the community. Uh, song and, and praise and worship is, is praise and worship at the same time. So we must uh, know and match this with the readings and so forth of, to bring the sense of unity and uh, mission and intent of that particular day to the Lord. So I began to study this, was fascinated it, and took, decided to take one course. And uh, shortly after that, we, I, I completed my degree, um, a Master's of Arts in Theology, and was able to use this in educating and working with the military community. Um, absolutely beneficial, uh, truly re revolutionizing for our family, because not only was I studying uh, theology for my, for my own desire and love of the Lord, but this reflected into the family. So my lessons became the family lessons. And uh, this was uh, an incredible blessing mm. that was never intended. And yet the Lord opened those doors. He um, gave me the insight and the ability and the support I needed my, uh, in order to, um, mm. uh, to meet those demands. And this has become key to my work now. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, you know, Pat, you experienced a season in life right mm. there where, you know, you're thriving in school, you're thriving in ministry, thriving in your home mm. life, your kids are doing well. 
And yet that season began to turn. Mm -hmm. Things began yeah. to unravel in ministry yeah. and in your personal life. What happened in that turn of events? My husband had been struggling with his business. He was a financial counselor for various uh, groups of people and it wasn't going well. He did not share this with me that this was in such a difficult circumstance. And he made a fateful decision of deciding to commit suicide. And uh, as you can imagine, it was, an, it was an absolute shock. I remember very well uh, thinking, how come he's not home and where is he? And I found the letter and realized that I think this is what's happened. And all of a sudden, you know, your world just, it's just no longer, you're no longer in the same realm. It's like this whirlwind uh, of, of anxiety and, and issues, everything all at once. And I had to tell my older children that uh, my two older daughters were at home and I imparted to them, said, I think this is what's happening. Um, before we tell the children, the younger ones, we have to be sure that this really is the case, that my husband is now passed away and under what circumstances. And we waited for the police. And in that time, I, I stood in my bedroom and I remember it was like a carousel thinking, I, I, Lord, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I, have, I have no idea. You know, where am I supposed to go from here? Everything all at once. Everything like the kids' university education, how to buy milk next week, your job, everything all at once. And I simply remember saying, it's yours. You know, that's it's yours. Take it, whatever you ask of me, um, I'll take the next step. It was such a complete sense of docility. And I felt very much at ease not knowing... Um, what was going to happen next, but I knew whatever that next step is, it's going to be the best one for us. In reflecting on these things today, one of the most poignant questions that the children asked was from my little girl. She was only 13 at that time. And she said, it's silence in the car. And she says, Mommy, who's going to walk me down the aisle when I get married? <laughs> I, I, oh, my gosh. She's like, I don't know, honey. We're going to figure that out. And, uh, and we did. Um, good thing about it is I knew God and I knew who he was. I knew headwise who he was and I now needed to learn this in my heart. Did I really trust God as, as he's asking me? And for me, uh, I talked a little about it was our Eve moment there. Uh, Eve in the garden is terrified. She doesn't know what's going to happen. She, yeah. And she makes a fateful decision and relies on herself. And, and, and succumbs to the serpent, to evil. Um, I think my husband was in the very same situation. He saw bankruptcy coming down and didn't turn to his pastor, didn't turn to me, didn't turn to the older kids who could have helped from the business side of things. Um, and he made a fateful decision, and that ends in death. I knew God was going to provide for us in some way, and we were going to get through this. Yeah. And we did. Yeah, you certainly <laughs> did. You know, Pat, your strength is... Mm -hmm. Very inspiring, and, and I know it's not easy, of course, mm -hmm. and what you've gone through is incredibly challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned that you had this head knowledge of God, and you'd mm -hmm. studied about who God was mm -hmm. so much. You'd done a master's degree mm -hmm. in that, in Bible studies, and all, mm -hmm. you know, all the things you would find out about who God is, theologically. Mm -hmm. But yet, you needed to have that heart knowledge of God. Uh, yes, yeah. Who was God for you before, and then who was God for you after this crisis? He hasn't changed. <laughs> He's just expanded in our knowledge and our growth towards him um, very much. Uh, I feel now looking back after 10 years of living in Canada again, that this experience was expressly given to me in order to be able to witness the fact that you can get through a crisis. And if we trust and say, all right, what do you have for me? Open up your mind and heart to the, to the wonderful things uh, that he has in store and I would say the grandbabies are one of those <laughs> things my work us meeting all these kinds of things are things that I could never have envisioned well, 10 years ago that's right and you know in that moment when you had just mm -hmm. lost your husband and shortly after you know you, you there were different factors mm -hmm. but your faith community wasn't present you didn't have mm -hmm. an income uh you know I know your story and you mm -hmm. end up being in a foreign country with mm -hmm. all your kids what happens next but yet you bound together as a family mm -hmm. and you are all in Prince Edward Island now mm -hmm. you've gone mm -hmm. back so that's yeah. about 10 years ago yeah. and today you're serving in an incredible capacity um, mm -hmm. teaching women that they can survive the crisis of an unplanned pregnancy yes mm -hmm. for Life Canada yes um, truly this is 
uh, I think, well, it's God's plan. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we surprised that we're surprised um, that uh, he saw this and prepared for, become, uh, us to, to be able to speak on this, um, not only from, from my perspective as the mother, but also from the children. My kids are very much involved, very supportive of the work I do. Uh, they, in their own right, are witnesses to life and their story proclaims the, the goodness of God. Mm. Uh, I work in the pro-life movement. I work in marriage preparation and tell this story to my couples to, in order to, when, when life is grand, marriage is easy. Mm -hmm. It's when the crises hits yeah. and unexpectedly, and I, crises are all ex unexpected. Nobody sets out to have a crisis. Uh, that's the nature of it, but we, we can prepare ourselves to be better prepared, and that is the the way to open up that communication with God, understand who Christ is, who what He wants for us, and the beauty of His desires, and uh, the fullness that we can't even begin to fathom yeah. of what He sees in us. And a mother perhaps looks at her child and can see how she, the child will develop and the beauty within, and God looks ever so much more at us and mm -hmm. sees that as well. And you know, Pat, for that woman watching right mm -hmm. now or that man watching right mm -hmm. now who's saying, I have just hit a crisis, an unprecedented crisis mm -hmm. I did not expect, and my life has been turned upside down, what would mm -hmm. you say to them? When I realize that uh, he's God and I'm not, uh, and why I put my faith in God is because God is unlimited. So take your grace infuse it in me, grow me, expand my heart, remove from me whatever is there keeping me from understanding that fullness of, of your love in my life. And when we look back, we'll see moments like that where every one of us has thought, gosh, today's the day I can't move anymore. That's it. I'm at the end of my rope. But yet here we are. We have moved forward and we know since we're limited, it wasn't our doing, so it's got to have been somebody else. And, and that is our Lord and he's waiting there to do that for us. So give it back to him while you're, whatever is on your heart and, and start today. Today's the day we have to, to work with. Wow. So good, Pat. Today mm -hmm. certainly is the day we have mm -hmm. to work with and it's the day God will work with mm -hmm. us on whatever we're going through. Mm -hmm. Pat, thank you so much for sharing such a beautiful personal story of incredible challenge, but incredible healing and restoration. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today, Pat. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you're struggling in this moment with something that is unprecedented and so painful, whether it is the loss of a loved one or the loss of a life you thought you would have, we want to encourage you in this moment that there are prayer partners waiting to pray with you. Please call 1-866-273-4444. Pat's life is living proof that God can turn all things together for our good, that no matter what you are facing, if you invite God into the crisis, Everything can change. In the Bible, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. That's God's promise for you today also.